Hi, I'm Liron Cohen. And I'm Mimi Torchin. And you're listening to Lady Parts TV, the podcast. Whee! Hello again. Hi. It's almost as if we've never said goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining us in the middle of the week, uh, or the beginning of the week, actually. And um, we, as promised, have more great things to tell you about. We don't have any stats today because it's basically part two mm-hmm. of the podcast we posted just a few days ago. Um, but very, very interesting things to tell you about. Starting with a new movie, uh, which I've actually, I had actually waited for uh, quite a long time because I'm a ba- very big Carrie Coon yes, fan. Yes, who isn't a very big Carrie Coon exactly. fan? Exactly. And I even had a surprise Wendy Crewson cameo. Yes, already. oh my I God. I didn't even know that. It was so surprised. I don't, and so small, I don't even think she... <laughs> I didn't even see her name in the credits. If you're a Wendy Crewson fan... You're used to that. You are very much used to watching a whole movie just to see her in practically two minutes. But that's what makes a Wendy yes, Crewson but it fan. Was, we went, oh my God! Exactly, the yes. excitement. And Anne Reed. And Anne Reed. Although but I wish Wendy's part had been as, exactly. as big as Anne Reed's. Or Still only at one least, scene, I think. Oh, maybe least, two. No, one scene, one but scene. at least she got a close-up, several. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is called The Nest... It's uh, in theaters and streaming November 17th, written and directed by Sean Durkin, and starring Carrie Coon and Jude Law. Um, They also have children. (laughs) They're played by Una Roche and and Charlie Shotwell. Shotwell. Very good. Um, But really, it's Carrie Coon and Jude Law. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And they're phenomenal. They're both... Well, Carrie Coon, I mean... I just love her so much. And Jude Law is excellent. Um, and the story yes, this is, is... I think, a super good performance by him. Yeah. It's kind of a... How, would you say a slice of life kind no, of? I no, wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'd say it's kind of... Um, it's almost a thriller, but not a quite. A thriller? Well, yes. Well, it has, it, it has, it has these elements. It does. It has overtones of... Uh, it does. It does. You, it kind you of, could expect horror, maybe. You're not sure what you're watching. You know, you're, you're, it's very interesting what you're saying, because... Of course um, it is. <laughs> <laughs> point taken. Point taken. Um, because, so, what the, what the movie's about is, is about a married couple in the 80s um, who live in America. He's English. She's American with their children. And he is uh, in the final. Finance, as he's a stockbroker, mm-hmm. and he, commodities trader. Commodities trader. Mm-hmm. I, I have no idea what the difference yeah, is. I'll trust you. Um, and he decides to take. And she them. works with horses. She works with horses, right? Mm-hmm. And he decides to take them back to England, where he thinks he has more opportunities. Um, and uh, to make a big killing. He's always after yeah, the big killing. He's very ambitious and uh, and grandiose. Things, and he he they get a, they rent a manor. That he gets her. He builds a stable. He gets he her horse. He, he moves stable, her horse yeah. from America to to England. But things are not okay. And things become increasingly less, increasingly less, increasingly okay. less. If that's a if that's a correct to say, increasingly less okay as time goes on. Um, and the the it's first of all it's extremely depressing very depressing but in a very good way um so this is the 80s and i think what he's doing here is showing on one hand cuz you know in the 80s i think there were two big trends i mean there were a lot of big trends but the two biggest trends were on one hand money money exactly the the um explosion of this uh, this idea reagan uh deregulation the idea that everybody can as you say make a killing uh, the rise of shows like Dynasty and you know Dallas, all these big people with big money yeah. and big clothes, and, and the people in um, trading um, and banking and everything were making big bucks. Again, Reagan, that kind of yeah, uh, that kind of mindset that was taking over, and it was taking over America. And Jude Law was thinking, oh, I can take, this to, take this to England, right? right. And at the same time, what was also happening in the 80s is uh, women were getting more rights. Women were supposedly becoming more independent. Mm. They were, you know, after the very big uh, women's movement in the, of the 70s, now women could get their own credit card. They could go to, out to work. They could do things that they couldn't do before. But they were still very much, especially in their families, still very much put in that place as a traditional right. wife, mother mm-hmm. role. And so they were getting all these mixed messages, not really knowing where they belong. And they were they were just independent enough 
to um, be, be kind of... To want to become more independent, but feel stifled, I think. Right. And I think what the movie also shows very well is how the next generation, the ne generation of her daughter, who is also extremely confused, but, is, but, but looks down on her mother as like, why aren't you doing more? Why aren't you more? And at the same time, uh, she was feeling so supposedly independent, but still had very little agency. And um, so it's it's really Carrie Coon's story of f trying to find her place. Uh, and, and she does trying to stand by her man to well, some degree. But trying but to also secure her, her life, her, life, her family's life. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, at some point, you don't know exactly what to think of him. Uh, he's and at a some pathological point, liar. He's a narcissist, a narcissist, for sure. For sure. Um, so it's very nerve-wracking. Oh, it's there's very a couple anxiety of scenes inducing. that are just cringeworthy with him. It was not an easy movie to no. watch, but it was very good. Yes, we very were riveted good. to it, actually. And the acting was superb. superb. Um, so, and, and I think it's, um, I, I don't know about you, I'm always fascinated with, about, I'm always fascinated with how, um, with culture in different eras. And the 80s was a very, very interesting time yes, to watch. I, I was out in the world in the 80s, very much. I was out um, in the world, too, but, um, <laughs> to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't have think, husband and children. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, I was always very independent, except one time when I wasn't, and that really taught me a good lesson. I um, think I think movies that make a statement about culture and about uh how politics affects culture how uh pop culture affect people's lives it's so fascinating and th this is a very very good depiction of it which doesn't try to spoon feed you anything and the, it just presents the view you with of what things. their children went through too right, was quite, right exactly quite fascinating and how that there's this uh, strange peripatetic uh and odd uh way they lived affected them yeah, you can take a lot from this movie. We highly recommend it. It's called The Nest. Just be just beware I know that it's not going to be a fun ride. It's no, going to be, you not know, at all. But it's going to be interesting and very well well acted. Uh so The Nest um streaming November 17th. Now, something completely different and quite marvelous. Um a new series uh premieres on Hulu November 18th. It's called No Man's Land, 8 episodes. It's created by Ron Lashem, Amit Cohen, Eitan Mansouri, and Maria Feldman. Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> um, and I'm not even going to tell you who it stars because it's... You won't know I, you anybody. Won't, I don't think you'll know anybody, but they're all wonderful. And um, uh, it it's, it's, uh, starts off with a family who has been grieving the death of their daughter in a, uh, a suicide bombing. And, in uh, France. In France, right. And uh, was it a year later, maybe a cup? You know, the brother sees a news clip about uh, these uh, female um, Kurdish, Kurdish uh, fighters in Syria. In Syria, um, who are very f famous and well known and brave and courageous. And he thinks he sees his sisters from the back, basically. But he becomes obsessed with finding her, and uh, therein hangs the tale. Um, he goes to Syria, uh, he joins this band of women, I'm not going to tell you if he finds his sister, uh, what happens. It's not that simple anyway. It isn't that simple at all. W we finished it in 36 hours. <laughs> we watched, watch, 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 went to sleep, woke up, watch, 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 you know, and that was... That's pretty much... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's excellent. Excellent. It's created by Israelis, but has very little to do with Israel. Except um, the Mossad plays a role. Uh, right. As, it uh, oh, and, as I, I was just going to say, James Purifoy is someone who you will know. Um, and um, he has an interesting role. Um, it takes place in France and Syria. Um, and it's uh, an excellent, excellent series. It gets you right up close and personal with uh, the battle, with you see what the refugees are going through, you uh, and it's the ex spy story, and it's, it's extremely ex female centric. Very female centric. I mean, there is a story that has to do mostly with men, but that's to me the secondary story. Yes, 
Um, and I love this uh, this group of women fighters. Oh, they're so uh, and they're fighting ISIS. And and especially what I love about it is, you know, if if uh, uh, if a man, if a, according to their faith or what they're taught, is that if he dies at the hand of a woman, he can't be a shaheed, yes. he and, and he can't get the seventy two virgins. No, he's in just heaven. dead. Just dead. So it's, so it's, it's even it's even it's sweeter. Doubles, yes, <laughs> to, to kill. Uh, for for to, for these women to fight uh, yes, terrorists, to even take away their uh, the ISIS fighters' um, ultimate promise of yeah. uh, paradise, eternal glory. Yes, mm-hmm. they're just dead. So, No Man's Land, highly recommended. Highly, highly premieres on Hulu November eighteenth, and definitely watch it. Yes. Next up, we have a Sundance Now series. Well, actually, it's not Sun. It's, it's British, and it's already been shown in Britain. But Sundance Now is bringing it to American and Canadian and U.S. audiences Thursday, November nineteenth. It's a mini series, only four episodes, and it's a good thing that it's four episodes because it, it stretched out. It would have been too anxiety inducing, <sighs> but this was intense. just right. It's called Cold Call, and uh, it's created by Karen Douglas Buckland and Mark Buckland. And starring... You think they're related? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I actually checked. I couldn't find it. Um, it's starring the fabulous Sally Lindsay, whom, if you're a Coronation Street, you should know. We, yeah. we don't... We don't know her, but we, boy, didn't know we her, know her, her but now. Both, exactly. We mm-hmm. know her now, and I'm going to keep my eye out. Um, Danielle Ryan, Paul Higgins, uh, and a bunch of other... other uh, A lot of very good actors. Um and it's set in, set in Manchester, and Manchester. this is a woman, just a regular, normal She's woman. She's a caregiver. She's a caregiver. She mm-hmm. works at a, an old mm-hmm. folks' home. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is a single mother. She has an older daughter who is now also pregnant and about to be a single mother herself. She lives with her mother and takes care of her elderly mother as well. And uh, one day she gets uh, a scammer who calls her and uh, it turns takes, out also that the mother had already spoken to they this. pray on the yeah. older so the mother he prayed on her mother the mother gave him a lot of information by the time he calls her he has enough information to make it seem legit and he basically steals all of her money and uh this is money that has been uh hard earned exactly um and uh a series of events happen, happen as a result. I'm not going to tell you a big thing that they do tell you in the premise because I was I, I, I hated knowing it. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell you it, uh, even though they tell you in the premise. So don't don't read. Mm-hmm. Just listen to us. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, she decides to seek revenge on the people who stole her money. And, you know, when we started it, we thought, well, you know, we've seen movies about scammers before mm-hmm. and people seeking revenge for being wronged. This is not it. No, because uh, the characters are so fascinating. Even the the scammer yeah. is so interesting and odd. And it's so much more than just uh, that old story. It's so much more also because I think what it wants to show you. This is again a woman who is a caregiver, who has spent her life trying to help others, and and with the years day after day of doing this grinding work and being one of those invisible workers that people who make a lot of money look down on or try not to look at it all or think assume assumptions about um and she just got tired and tired and more tired of of being treated that way and being wrong that way that that really that scammer it's just kind of the the last straw so and and it shows you um how far people who who really just just wanted to go about their lives doing good work and um, have been jaded by this world's cynicism and cruelty and um, greed and corruption. Yes. H- what, what they end up possibly being pushed to do. And as she uh, says to someone, um, it's been my, I, I have listened to people all my life. They've told me their stories. No one else will listen to them. I listen to them. I help them. I pay attention to them. It's taught me how to see people and mm-hmm. how to read things. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe someone else wouldn't have been able to do what she was able to do, but being the person she was in the field she was in and being um, um, an empathetic person, it helped her in this right. endeavor. Right. I mean, it, it also made her the wonderful care- caregiver that she yes. was, but when, when push came to shove... <laughs> Anyway, it was really, really, really good. Really Oh, uh, my God. Sally Lindsay was absolutely fantastic. Uh, really, really highly recommended. Sundance Now on November 19th, Cold Call.
Okay, now for a movie that I have been looking forward to. Uh, premieres November 20th on Hulu, and it is called Run. Run. And it's starring the fabulous Sarah Paulson and a newcomer, Kira Allen. Look out for her because oh she is going to be big. Big, big, big. She's so good. Uh, the movie was written and directed by Anish Shaganti, co-written by Sev Ohanian, uh, two men, so nothing to... But, but. Hilary Spera, DP, well, you know, we always point yes, out when the director... Female. Yeah, when a cinematographer is a woman, which for some reason doesn't happen Very often, often enough. Because it certainly was well shot. In fact, I remember... Uh, commenting on that, that yes. I like the way it was shot. Yes, because this is, it's a thriller. Yes, it is a thriller. Uh, it's a, a story of, and, and the reason I'm only mentioning Sarah Paulson and Kira Ellen is because it's really it's just a pas de deux. Pas de it's deux. the two of them in a perfect duet. Uh, and it's, it's, I'll tell you what it's about, but please don't think you know where it's going because it's one of those things, again, it could have been that old movie, but it's not. Uh, it's about a, about a mother who has a baby. The baby is premature. Uh, there are a lot of physical ailments and limitations and uh, disabilities. Uh, and she becomes so entangled in this baby's life, uh, in her daughter's life. She takes care of her. She, you know, basically has devoted her entire life to taking Home care of her. teaches her. She's highly intelligent, the girl. Right. And she grows capable. their own food. Mm -hmm. And this is when the girl is about to graduate from school and uh, has started registering for, for coming, I mean, applying for colleges. Her dream is to go out to college. Um, and uh, she's starting to suspect that her mother is not being truthful with her. And I'll stop there. You can probably assume where it's going, but again, it is not anything you've ever no. seen before. There have been movies about movies. it. There have been TV shows yes. about it. Uh, this is not it. It's a very, very satisfying movie. They they kept it short and sweet. I think it's an hour and yeah. a half, which is all that it needed to be. Because if they had tried to drag it out, it would it wouldn't have worked. It's pacing. Well, because really, it, really uh, helps you get to the next thing. And well, the next also because thing it starts thing. at a yes. hundred. It just starts right there. It doesn't. It almost barely has a buildup. So you, there's a limit to how long they can keep you at that level of suspense. You know, at some point you get tired of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really good. Really good. Really surprising. Many different original twists and turns. The excellent acting by both. Again, no surprise there with Sarah Paulson, but this is a, a brand new actress who is wonderful. Wonderful again, Kira Allen. Uh, we absolutely loved it, enjoyed it fully. And I have to tell you that when I saw the, the trailer, and the trailer made it look like a horror movie. Uh, and it's sort of a horror movie, but it's... I would say it's closer to a thriller. Thriller, yeah, I would too. I, uh, I mean, there are elements of horror, especially when it comes to how they shoot it. Mm -hmm. and, but I, as somebody who's not a fan of the horror genre, to me that was something that was... Um, Off-putting at first. Exactly, and the only reason I wanted to see it was Sarah Paulson. Uh, and especially because in the trailer, again, the, the, this this idea of the mother who is kind of controlling of her daughter who has disabilities, I thought, oh, no, it made me think about the act. Mm -hmm. And even especially though... Especially made you think of the act. Yes, and the act was so excellent, but so brutal to watch. And I just thought, uh, do I want to put myself through it again? And I said, well, it's a movie, so it's not going to be too long. And it's Sarah Paulson, and I want to see it. And I'm so happy that it I did. because really good. Run, don't walk. Exactly. To, the, to your TV. To exactly. <laughs> because it really is, it's very different from what you think. Yeah. Uh, so watch it, watch it, watch it. It's called Run. It's on Hulu, November 20th. Finally. A new documentary called Stunt Women, The Untold Hollywood Story. And I have always been fascinated by the stunt world. Um, uh, this is, by the way, uh, it was released in September and it's available on Amazon uh, Prime for $4.99. And uh, it was directed by April Wright, and it's based on the best-selling book by Molly Gregory, very, and it's all about women. So it's My about favorite It's about matter. as female-centric as you can get. <laughs> uh, Michelle Rodriguez did the narration, but there are a lot, so many interviews, um, and uh, it takes us behind the scenes uh, of what it's like to be a stunt woman. It introduces us to the very earliest. It it, it traces the history of stunt women. Um, and yeah, how, it goes back to the silent era. Yes, and um, how, as always, they had to fight, fight, fight for equality, for equal pay, for their place in the world. I don't world, even know that they achieved to any be, of No, that. to be uh, treated uh, with, with respect, respect um, to be taken seriously. You will want to scream at some points about the way they're um, 
uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Look down on? No, that's not the word. But patronized? All right. Patronized, yes. Um, uh, it is so engaging, and you will love these women. And s- some of them are parts of families of mm-hmm. stunt people. And um, they they never get it out of their blood. They get into their 60s, and they still want to be, you know, jumping 80s, off. 80s, practically. 80s, yes. <laughs> jumping off of bridges and planes and... Uh, um, it shows you how the work, some of the work is done, which you lo- which I love yes, seeing. Yes, fascinating. Um, You'll see some of your favorite movies and how certain scenes were shot and what it took. And also, but the danger, oh, oh my God, my the injuries, God. Not the that I'm at all surprised because some of those stunts are just unbelievable. Well, and a lot of these women I love also went from being stunt women to stunt coordinators. Coordinators. Which is basically like big, the director. Right. right. And it was it took a long time for, for them to allow a woman to get in. Exactly. And you see they them work. second unit directors some right. of them yes exactly because they have a special a different way of looking at things and when you do certain shows that are very or high films. on stunts mm-hmm. right on films then then you need that you need a person who sees the action from that perspective right and how they care for their stunt people because it, it's such you know you need you need such a high level of trust when you do that work because you can die and and people have died or you can be maimed for life and people have been so it's fascinating. Oh, I just loved such it. Such kick-ass women. Oh, they're oh, so God. amazing. You will cheer it. for them. You love will it. love them. Yes. Um, it's just wonderful. I, I, if you have any interest in this whatsoever, you will love this. Yeah. It's uh, thrilling. Stunt Women, The Untold Hollywood Story is available on Amazon for four ninety nine. It's a documentary, and we think you'll love it. So make sure to check it out. All right. So... Thank you for joining us oh, for another podcast. Yes. This was it for, for this time. Uh, and we will be back with another one very soon because this is this is November. Things are happening quickly. And we will have several lesbian movie pl- uh, movie clubs oh, yes. to, uh, to do this uh, in the next month or so. We're so looking forward to seeing the films yes, and uh, sharing and telling them with you all you. about mm-hmm. them. So make sure to keep up with us on social media and uh, subscribe to our website, to our blog, um, because you will not want to miss no, any of it. Please wear Wear a mask. Wear a when mask. You go out and um, stay safe. Stay safe and stay home stay when home. you can. All right. Yeah, a lot to watch. Why do you? Why exactly. Do you we just gave you hours of exactly. stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and write to us, ladyparts.tv at gmail.com. Tell us how you've been doing. See you Bye. soon. <laughs>